Good morning, everyone. My name is Diana Alarcon. Thank you for being here with us this morning to uh, watch a webinar on process automation with Studio Prime. This webinar will be presented by David Campbell, so I'm going to go ahead and let him take it away. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> It's been an interesting Friday so far. We've had some technical difficulties, but uh, we're we're right back at it and ready to go. So um, hey, TGIF, thank goodness it is Friday. <laughs> but uh, today, yes, we're going to cover process automation with Studio Prime. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about us, TopCon Solutions. Um, TopCon is the regional R. TopCon, um, I'm sorry, TopCon. Uh, TSS, TopCon Solutions, is the regional arm of TopCon Positioning Systems, the world leader in construction layout, machine automation, and land surveying products. So TopCon Solutions is a platinum tier award-winning Autodesk value reseller and a platinum level Bluebeam partner with certified instructors on staff. So we do have 13 different uh, brick and mortar locations, and we are located in 20 states and Washington, D.C. A little bit about me. My name again is David Campbell. I'm an application specialist for the TopCon Solution Store. Um, I am a Bluebeam certified instructor as well as a certified consultant. And um, today we're going to be covering uh, Bluebeam Studio Prime. So I'm going to give you guys an overview of what Studio Prime is, uh, give you a little walk walkthrough of the insight and metric that we can generate from Studio Prime. And then we're going to have a conversation and I'm going to show you guys a little bit about uh, the automations and integrations that we have utilizing Studio Prime. All right, so I'm going to switch over and I'm going to get into Studio Prime. So this is the interface that you're going to look at now. It is web based. OK, so you would go to the Prime portal, you'll log in and this is where it's going to take you now. <clears throat> One of the first things I wanted to talk about really quick was the members and collaborators, okay, and then your total users. So this is kind of uh, an, an interesting little topic here. Members is, are, are the people that you have in your group, okay, in your company, um, whoever is going to be um, under you. I like to think of the Prime Portal as allowing me to be like the studio czar, right? I'm the one in charge. I'm going to be able to see everything that's going on, um, know who's utilizing any of my um, Prime kind of spots. And then again with the collaborators, who who are we collaborating with? This is anybody who's outside of our of our company, anybody I don't want to really manage, but I want to know that, you know, they're what, well, what projects, what sessions they're kind of in, what they're doing, how we're doing with them and things like that. Now, you're going to see the insights here gives us um, insights on our users, projects, and our sessions. Now, I'm going to go into these insights a little bit. Oh, need to re-sign in. There we go. All right. So I'm going to get into these insights here. And what you're going to see is we can generate insights for maybe all of our different projects or a select um, group of projects. Maybe I wanted to grab um, digital dashboards, anything like that. Um, and, and I can generate a, a metric kind of printout of either the activity that's been going on in those projects. And it's going to basically give you like a summary, uh, kind of like the report in studio sessions. Now. We also have shared links. So any of the files, so in um, in Bluebeam Studio projects, you can share external file links, right? And this will go ahead and tell you, give you a report of how many of those links have been shared. Then you're going to have the statistics for your different projects. Now, we also can generate these on our sessions. Um, same kind of thing, you're going to see the activity just the statistics okay and then you can give a specific date range that you want to go ahead and pull this from so maybe the other side of this is your user activity so this is nice because this is where we can go through and select any of our different users and then see what their activity has been let's go with the last let's go with the last 30 days i hit go and it's going to take, oh, it says I haven't been on. Well, that stinks. <laughs> you, 
you're going to see um, some of the activity, the internal participation, um, as in who um, in your group is participating in what session. And then uh, external is going to be, again, those collaborators who uh, is participating in, in what section, what session. Oh, I can't speak today. Um, and then, of course, you're getting a report for your user statistics. So that is the insights. Now, let me go back. And the metrics of all of this is really going to be here. You're going to look at your seven day, your 14 day, and then your 30 day, and be able, again, to pull any of that out um, into kind of data to show exactly how many projects you have active, how many sessions you have active, and again, what users, things like that. Um, you're also going to see a nice little uh, button, any recently created projects or sessions. So that's also nice to have. And again, we can pack those here. So you're going to see all of our different projects that we have um, going on. We can really get into any of those and to see, again, who's in it, what documents are hosted, who's actually running the project, things like that. And then if I get into my sessions, you're going to see the same. So uh, you'll see any of the people that are collaborating and then the documents, which if you're utilizing projects into sessions, that can be very uh, nice to know what documents are, are being pushed out into sessions, when they're going out into sessions, who took it out, and then when they're being pulled back in. All right. So now for a couple of the more important parts, right? Automations and integrations. So this webinar, I wanted to really talk about um, automating some of your processes utilizing Studio Prime. I had to take a drink of water there real quick. But uh, with these folder automations, because that's what they are, they're going to be folder automations. They're going to be commands that you can set up. So when you put documents into specific folders in your projects, um, you can essentially set up a process for what happens to them. So you're going to see I have an RFI and then an extract PDF. If I go into my RFI process, Basically, what I did was I, I prepared this to, um, well, actually, it's not enabled yet. So why don't we go ahead and do this? When I put any one of these documents here, whether it's going to be Word, an image, PDF, PostScript, Excel, DWG, um, whenever I place one of these types of documents in this folder, which it's going to be the submit RFI for reviews, so right here. And here's the project number. So this, this is exactly how we know where this is uh, kind of going to and where it's coming from. Now, I'm, I'm going to go back into this in a minute, and I'm actually going to show you guys how to create this folder automation because there's, there's, there is a, a process for it. But uh, let's say I want to go ahead and grab the PDFs. So I know I'm going to be using PDF RFIs. So I'm going to go into edit here. And I'm basically going to go ahead and specify the action that I want to create. Am I going to create a report from that RFI? Um, am I going to flatten it, extract any information? Most of the time, I want to go ahead and stamp it, or maybe I want to answer it, right? Anything like that. We get submittals. Maybe you want to go ahead and stamp a submittal or a spec sheet that's submitted for review, okay? We can go ahead and choose to stamp that. And then when we choose to stamp, we'll go ahead and pull the exact stamp that we want to use. So maybe I have a stamp in my RFI, and I have um, typically what we would do is store a uh, a stamp, like an approval stamp, RFI stamp, submittal, project stamp, anything like that, in these folders with your project, okay? And then what we do is path it there. It's going to go ahead and tell us where do we want to put it, ask us where do we want to put it. We're going to tell it uh, with this anchor point here whether we want it in the upper um, lower or center parts of the uh, page, and any offsets or rotations, anything like that that we need. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel this one out. I'm going to go back. All right, the other one I had here is going to be an extract. So this extract tool um, is going to be, so if we get DWGs. And maybe I want to see what's going on in that, you know, the CAD drawing, but I don't have AutoCAD. Uh, I could I could easily just transition it into a PDF utilizing something like this, this uh, automation here. And here's where I'll go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. 
edit here. And again, it's the same kind of thing where you're going to see um, what you choose in terms of a action, right? And basically with my DWG options here, I'm going to choose what do I want to plot? Do I want to plot all of my layouts and the model space? Do I just want to plot this model space or just the layouts? And do I have a plot style table? If you have a plot style table, you can go ahead and pull that in. Any custom font, go ahead and pass that as well. Your hyperlinks, if you want to transfer those over. Um, your SHX fonts, if you want those to transfer over. Your layers, so being able to turn those layers on and off um, within Bluebeam Review. Okay. And then do you want to reduce that file size? So the, think of these automations, and I'm going to, again, I'm going to go in this here in a second, but when you think about these automations, you'll see that you can stack multiple actions on top of each other. So if we know this PDF is going to be huge, we can go ahead and do a quick reduce file size before anybody even gets into it. When they automatically, when they load the uh, DWG, it's automatically going to go ahead and start processing to a PDF and then flatten or, well, reduce file size or flatten itself for us. Okay. And the thing I didn't talk about there was the file output path here. This, so this is really where you're going to be putting the finished document. So up here, um, I'm going to go back into save. But essentially, we're going to see that you path it anytime something is added to a folder. But what you have to do is you got to give it another output folder. So you can't output it in the same one that you're pulling from. So we would have to specify another, pro uh, another project folder, and then it'll place that document there. Now, I do kind of want to show you guys what this looks like. So I'm going to go into review, and let's say I want to pull a DWG into this, and then here is that DWG PDF folder. So I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to upload a new file. I'm going to find one of my CAD drawings. Let's go into, actually, Let's go to this one. There we go. And let's say I have a floor. I'll, I'll grab, just grab this one, the lobby floor plan. All right. So this, this is going to take a minute, but it's going to go ahead and upload this DWG. And as it's doing this, it's going to go ahead and start processing. So it's not here yet. It's going to take a second for it to go ahead and print that to PDF and then um, reduce that file size for us but we'll go ahead and uh, push forward here and check back on that here in a couple minutes. But I've already started the process with that. What I'm gonna do with you guys now is let's go ahead and let's make a folder automation, right? Let's see kind of how this works. First off, I should probably come back into my project here and I have a submittal folder. I have answered and submittals for review, but I don't have an automation set up for this yet. So I'll come up. Why don't we select my project? There we go. Select my folder path. There we go. We're going to pull that submittals. And we're going to put this in submittals for review. So we know whenever that submittal is put in, that's where it's going to start. Okay. All right, now I did say whenever a document is put into that folder, but you can adjust that. So when you can say either when the file is added or even when the file is modified, it's automatically gonna do this again for you. I'm gonna hit save. Right, so we know we know what's gonna happen here, right? We either wanna go ahead and, and which, I was going to say that we can actually build multiple processes and automations in here. If you know you're going to get a submittal in Word, go ahead and transfer that over to a PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. We're going to tell it where it's going to go. And maybe I'm actually going to throw that one just in the submittals. Because you know what's funny is I, I think at that point I would need another folder to put these into. So at that point, 
why don't we just make one, All right? Let's go to new folder. Mm. There we go. All right, output file path. Take me back in. There we go. Should have called it conversion, but that's all right. And save. So there it is. I can go back to this automation. Now I want to set it up if I get a PDF. So I'm going to go ahead. Maybe I want to stamp it. My file path. Now I didn't load a stamp, did I? So what I would need to do back in here, I will tools, stamp, let's go ahead, get into this file, save as, we're going to put this right into that submittal folder there, and I'm going to pull this stamp and push it right into my project. Cool. There it is. So now we'll go back. All right. I'm going to have to path it. There it is. Right there. Okay. Where do we want to put it? Maybe upper right corner. Actually, let's do center. Okay. No, I'm not going to get rid of that one. And output path answered submittals or approved submittals. We could do that. Once I hit save, it's going to store that in there. All right. Now, again, I could keep going even with Excel. This is a great thing, a great tool that we can keep going and going and going with. But not to take up too much of your time, I'm going to come back in here. And let's say I want to get into this submittal. Now, the nice thing about a project you can access this from anywhere, right? Now, this is going to be a fillable form. I say check out. And here it goes. So all of my data here is now fillable. Go ahead, and if maybe I'm in the field using an iPad or Surface Pro, what have you, and I need to go ahead and place up this submittal, I'd go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'd go ahead and fill out all the rest of that information. Now, what I'm going to do at this time is a file save as, and I'm going to put it right in that submittals and that submittals for review. Once I do that, now what I would need to do actually is as the project administrator, I would come into this projects for review and I would go into this submittal here. Now, I may have passed this wrong before, because I did. I set it up. Uh, see, I set it up to automatically approve it, and that's no good. That's no good. What am I doing? All right, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to delete this thing out of there, and I need to adjust that. Uh, <laughs> I need to adjust that. So what should happen is I would come in manually and enter these submittals for review. Once I do this. I'm going to go ahead, open this, read through it, and then I could stamp it with the approval stamp. And then once I file save as, I would place it into the submittals and the answered submittals. And what I would do with this automation is I'm going to actually have this edit. And I want to, I want it to, it's fine. We're going to put, leave it right there. I just need to adjust that parent folder, essentially. So what I need to do is, as I said, I need to adjust that parent folder, drop it into the um, actual submittals folder. And then I would actually, when I place it in another folder, like reviewed submittals, it would automatically go ahead and stamp it for me. 
things like that, okay? Um, now, I could go on making quite a few of these, but I think it's important that I transition on over to the integration part of the conversation here. Now, if you guys have any questions, if anyone has any questions on this, um, feel free to ask towards the end of the webinar. I can go back into this and kind of walk through any of these automations or anything that I've covered uh, up to this point. So the last thing I'll cover today is going to be these integrations. So right now you're going to see that I have an integration loaded for Autodesk BIM 360 and Bluebeam Studio sessions. What this is going to allow me to do is through Blue, um, BIM 360 document management, I can send a um, document or you know a multi-page document, single page, what have you, from BIM 360 docs into Bluebeam Studio for an active session to place markups, get everyone's info. And then as soon as it's done, I pull that back into BIM 360 and we have a fully marked up PDF, okay? But, there are several other integrations that I felt like we needed to mention. So you're going to see Field Lens, eBuilder, Ignite, and you know what? I looked this up earlier. So I'm going to go to um, Bluebeam Studio Prime integrations. And I think it was current. All right. So this is, if you go to Bluebeam's website, I know I could talk about these all day, um, but if you go to Bluebeam's website, there's a whole list of these here with all of the connect integrations that uh, Studio Prime gives you. So with Pipe Auto Specs, Ignite Connect, the eBuilder, Field Lens. Uh, I really do like, of course, BIM 360 and the new form of Project Center, Hollow Builder and Drone Deploy. All of these integrations are gonna help you with your process of, let's say you are taking drone data and you're getting scans or images of your site, being able to transition those into PDF and making markups on them for layout, any safety issues, anything like that that you, that you might see. Um, we can go ahead and enable that workflow through uh, Bluebeam Studio or Bluebeam Studio projects with the use of Studio Prime. Okay, and again, all of these are listed here. Now, another note on that is you can always build your own integration. Bluebeam has left a, an open-ended API, meaning that um, there is a full developers network. There's a developers forum that you guys can get into and start writing up integrations between things that you already use. Maybe you have a different online uh, document management platform and you'd like it to integrate with uh, Bluebeam Studio. And this would be the answer for that, okay? Um, you would simply go to add new, and then what you need is an integration ID. So it's like a little code. And you'll go ahead, type that number in, hit look up, and then it'll connect it for you. All right, so with that, do we have any questions? Actually, uh, there's a little chat box down to the side. I may be able to uh, see if you guys have any questions there. All right. It appears that we have none at this time, David. All right, thank you, Diana. All right, well, um, we don't have any questions. Um, you guys can, let me get back to the slideshow here. Thank you very much for coming, but you guys can always email us or um, call us if you guys do have any other questions about Bluebeam Studio, Bluebeam Studio Prime, or any of the integrations, the processes, automations that you guys can uh, activate, or if you know, you're just getting into it and trying to figure out what's what and how to do this, give us a call. We, we do this stuff quite often. Um, we do consulting for Studio Prime, um, well, pretty much anything that you guys might need. Just give us a call and uh, we'll help out as much as we can. Thank you very much.